Our first question is from James Hawkins. Uh, James Hawkins, Detroit News. Uh, hey, Juwan, I know, I know earlier this month you mentioned that you went down to, to Florida State to meet with Leonard Hamilton after you first got hired at Michigan. Um, I guess, just in what ways did he help you in that transition into becoming a college head, co head coach, and uh, what did you learn from him? Well, um, our, our relationship runs deep. Uh, it goes back to uh, the time when I played for Coach Hamilton when I was playing for the Washington Wizards. Um, the respect that I have for Coach uh, as a man, as a father, and also as a coach, obviously, uh, during his times uh, coaching University of Miami as well as Florida State. He's had amazing success, so I have a ton of – I feel he has, a, a you know, great knowledge for just uh, the game of basketball, people, um, and, you know, his resume speaks for itself. So our conversations uh, were very good. Uh, I learned a lot. Um, I will continue to use Coach Hamilton as a, a mentor, a father figure, an uh, example of what, you know, great – successful coaches uh, look like in, in, on this collegiate level. Our next question is from Angelique Chengelis, Detroit News. Juan, I was just uh, talking to Kim barnes Rico on the, the women's call, and, and she spoke so much about your support of, of her program being in the front row. Why has that been important for you? Well, I mean, it's just naturally who I am. <laughs> you know, I, I love Michigan. I love everything about the – the university, and um, you know, I get a, I got an opportunity to watch the women play um, since the time I you know, got the job here at the University of Michigan, and was always impressed with uh, the staff. Um, always impressed with Coach Kim's leadership, and then you know the talented young ladies that are out there, you know, working hard each and every day in practice. So there were moments when I had an opportunity to look and watch the practice and see how she runs a practice, her and her staff, and and just learn from them. And you know, it, it was nice building a relationship with her. Um, it's been pure. Uh, will always be that way, no matter what, because I, I respect uh, Kim uh, not only just as a coach but as a person. Next question is from Orion Sang. Hey, Juwan, I was just curious what your relationship is like with Scotty Barnes and, and your thoughts on him as a player. Yes, uh, Scotty and I have been knowing each other for a very long time. Uh, growing up in the Florida area, um, my boys and Scotty uh, crossed paths on the AU level. And then um, as they got older, uh, Scotty, Jace, and Jet played high school ball together at uh, Nova. And they also won a, a state championship together. So they've been through the trenches. Um, Scotty, uh, he, he has a great relationship with uh, me and my wife, and uh, we love Scotty. Uh, we, we, of course, admire his success uh, thus far at, at uh, FSU, and I'm, just, I'm so, so proud of him. Our next question is from Andrew Kahn, Ann, Ar Ann Arbor News. Hi, Joanne. Thanks for your time. Um, I'm wondering if it, you know, means anything special to you that you know you and Coach Hamilton are both black, uh, you know, facing off here in the in the Sweet 16. Um, if that if that means anything to you, uh, we're, we're two uh, men that's able to empower young men uh, to go out there and live their dreams, and uh, it's special just to see, you know, the you know what Coach Ham has done for the program uh, for these young men that he's been empowering for many many years. Um, Truly, I, I try to take something that I've learned from him and try to implement to you know myself because I'm a young coach that's thriving to impact others, uh, to be inspiring to other coaches, uh, no matter what race it is. But it's beautiful to see the impact Coach Ham has had on me and others. Uh, he's a great example, and he's he's that way because he's so pure. Uh, he remembers the times of the other coaches. Uh, help pave the way for him and teaching him along the way. And uh, he, he don't mind, you know, serving and giving. And that's why he's so successful. And, and I respect that. Thank you. Our next question is from Aaron Beard, AP. Hey, Juwan, Aaron Beard with the Associated Press. Um, I realize there's a next man up mentality that you would preach to your team with any injury over the course of a season. 
I guess I'm curious, what is the biggest challenge maybe in helping a team adjust to such a significant late season hit like Isaiah or Colin Gillespie at Villanova? It could be the mental part of making sure guys handle it right or the X's and O's on the court. Well, uh, the brotherhood is real. Uh, the culture is real. So when you have a family member that goes down with an injury, everyone pulled together uh, to uh, help that particular player uh, go through uh, the experiences of what he's dealing with. And it's not easy. It's very hard. So um, when it comes to playing out there on the floor, you know, there's in a lot of moments in practice uh, where you see your team and see, you know, like which guy and what each guy provides to help the team in, in any ways that impact winning. And we have a very deep roster. And so uh, the next man up mentality is never to disrespect, you know, a player's injury. Uh, to always feel that you got your brother's back. And that's how this mindset has been throughout the time that I became the head coach here at the University of Michigan. Our next question is from Bob Wojnowski. Yeah, Bob Wojnowski, Detroit News. Hey, Juwan, you've obviously talked about your connection with uh, Coach Hamilton personally and throughout your What about style of play on the court. Do you see similarities? Is that by design, by accident? It seems like you guys believe in a lot of the same principles on, on the court. I haven't even looked at this, to be honest with you. I, I love the man. Our next question is from Theo Mackey. Yeah, Juan, I'm just wondering what the uh, most challenging aspect is of preparing can you repeat your question? Um, I'm wondering what the most challenging aspect is of preparing for Florida State's length. Well, uh, we face a lot of different um, uh, s s different teams throughout the year, whether it's in non-conference play or in Big Ten play, and then leading up to postseason play. So um, all teams are different in a lot of ways, but somewhat similar. Uh, but it's nothing new that we've uh, we faced. Yes, they. They length average, what, six, six foot eight. Uh, their wingspan is pretty long, but um, you still got to play the game no matter what. You got to go out there and compete, and that's what we're looking forward to, the competition. And uh, we'll be ready to roll on Sunday. Next question is from Paul Meyerberg, USA Today. Well, good morning. Um, you guys have been in Indy longer than anyone else in the Sweet 16, with, along with Maryland. I'm curious if you're concerned at all about the mental strain this is placed on student athletes and, and what you guys have done as a team to break up the monotony of, of this controlled environment. Well, uh, we've embraced uh, living here in Indy, and it's been great. Um, we made sure that we, we continue to keep changing our bed linens and getting comfortable with our hotel room. We have also did an amazing job of making sure we locked in, knowing that this is a business trip that our students have to make sure that their classroom academics is, is in line and not um, getting backed up in that area. Uh, we've also embraced the practice schedule, um, being able to get better while we're in the gym and being efficient with our time. Um, we also embrace the NCAA and what they've done a fantastic job of allowing us to hang out at the victory field, um, playing a little badminton, throwing the football around. Uh, we also look, embraced the, the visit to the zoo. Uh, and then just yesterday, we had a great outing over at Top Golf. So uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, our goal is to continue to keep moving forward wherever uh, and how long we're going to be here. We're going to enjoy it. Uh, we're not looking forward to going home early. Our next question is from Zachary Braziller, New York Post. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Juwan, you talked, you know, your relationship with Scotty Barnes and Leonard Howitzer. What's it going to be like coaching against them, people you have obviously deep connections with? Man, I, if my grandmother was still living, and she's playing basketball. And I'm a very competitive individual. I play her one on one, and I'll be very physical with her. And uh, when the game is over, with, I'm going to embrace her, hug her, kiss her. Uh, that's exactly how it goes in the game of basketball. Uh, once the game starts, you know, you locked into your opponent. And I know that they're looking forward to going out there and competing. They don't care if it's me or no one else. They know that they have goals in, you know, in front of them. And we have goals that's in front of us. And we understand that Florida State is looking to spoil our, our goals and our dreams. And um, after the game's over, you know, we'll embrace the, 
the brotherhood, the camaraderie, friendship, family. But uh, right now, it's about the competition. Next question is from Kevin Brockway, CNHI Sports Indiana. Yeah, uh, Coach, uh, I wonder your thoughts on being the last Big Ten team standing in the Sweet 16 and how much of a surprise is that to you, the way things have unfolded? I'll let you guys, you know, have fun with that. You know, I, right now, all I'm concerned with is just Michigan. I've always been that way. Next question is from Andre Monroe, Insider Institute. Good morning, Coach. I was just wondering, after a hard-fought game from LSU, I was just wondering how you, how you balance rest over preparation? Well, um, after that hard fought game, we enjoyed that victory that evening. Because um, at times, you know, like when you win a game, you normally know try to move on to the next game right away. And uh, I don't want our guys to have that type of mindset. They worked extremely hard, um, competed uh, from start to finish, played a very well skilled, talented LSU group that played hard. Uh, and, you know, next day, I uh, just wanted to make sure that our guys got a chance to uh, rest their bodies, minds, and get back into their schoolwork. Um, and then, like, you know, yesterday we had a good practice. Today we're going to have a great practice. Tomorrow we're looking forward to another great practice. And uh, that has been how we balanced it out. Our next question is from Olivia Ray, Wish TV. Coach, I'm, this is a little premature here, but I'm kind of working on a thank you letter to the city of Indianapolis for pulling off this tournament. And I wanted to know if you had a message to share. It could be um, officials, it could be volunteers, anything that you've encountered here that has really impressed you. Well, I said it before and I'm not afraid of saying it again. NCAA thus far has done a great job in uh, making sure that this uh, this all have came to fruition and, you know, just the thoughts of last year and how it ended and everyone was, you know, very disappointed, um, understood why. Uh, but I've been very appreciative of, you know, every person that's been working, that's been a part of the NCAA um, in the hotels, um, whether it's security, uh, whether it's uh, our ambassadors, um, also, uh, the NCAA officials that's helping with the day-to-day -day operations, security, everyone has been uh, all hands on deck in making uh, this transition and making everyone, every team, uh, I'm speaking of every college team, um, be comfortable while being here and also safe. And the healthcare workers, I cannot leave them out. Uh, some of the nicest individuals, great energy. Um, I look forward to, yeah, like, no one really looks forward to putting a, a swab a Q-tip up your nose or whatever, but um, we understand why we're doing it. But the workers there are playing nice music. Uh, the conversations has been great. They, they've been the sweetest people to have an opportunity to meet. And so um, kudos to the NCAA on what they've been doing. Much respect. Our final question for Coach is from Gene Frenette. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, obviously, and I apologize if this has been asked earlier in some form, uh, could you tell me what you learned uh, in your memory, what you learned the most from Coach Hamilton uh, when you played for him in the NBA? And do you have to discipline yourself to not get caught up in a matchup with somebody you have feel an emotional connection to? I just told you, I, I'll play my grandmother one-on-one, -on -one. <laughs> so, yeah. so it doesn't matter to me. So. I'm a competitor. I fuck competitors only. Uh, but as far as what I've learned from Coach Hamilton, um, I learned a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to keep learning because I have that growth mindset. But he's a great example. Uh, John Thompson, Coach Leonard Hamilton, um, Coach John Cheney, um, and many others. Uh, those coaches are paving the way for a guy like myself and the young uh, other coaches that are coming in, like uh, Makai, Screwberry, uh, just to name one. But the list goes on, and it's keep growing. And um, Coach Hamilton will always be that friend, father figure uh, that I will always uh, lean on. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.